Hello, everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. Guys, Williams show. Just uh, getting a few things setting up here. Uh, I hope everybody is well and good. Uh, yeah, we are streaming live in November. I'm in the UK, in Bristol, in fact. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the Roland Integra 7. Yeah, that's uh, whoop, let's have a look. That's this thing here. Yep, the last rack unit that Roland have made. Maybe they'll make another. Who knows? Uh, but I think really Roland have moved this kind of thing onto the cloud now. And uh, so I think this may well represent the very last one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, I. Yeah, I'm using a headset mic at the moment, but I think it might be a little bit not a little bit noisy. So I apologize. Spurious noises going on there. I can hear them. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. So why why on earth have I got an Integra Seven? What on earth is that all about? Why 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 why? Well, there's a bunch of reasons really. Um, Behind me is a very interactive kind of studio layout. Um, I should do a video at some point with the the way it's all set up. Um, but one of the things I, I've had for a short while, really, which is the RetroKit RK8 MIDI sequencer. And that is a fantastic little sequencer. But uh, I didn't. I don't think I had really the right equipment to fully take advantage of it. Well, kind of, but uh, it, it sort of let, led me down a path. I was talking on Sonic State earlier about it, really, and uh, I was thinking, oh, yeah, a, a, you know, a, a really multi-timbral kind of uh, machine would actually be quite fun. These are really unfashionable now, as uh, my show is alluding to, really. Um, just checking in the chat room. Hey, Dean, nice to hear from you, man. Wicked. Hello, uh, Mark. Hello, Tunnel Axis. Hello, Culture of Ghosts. That's a great name. Thanks for joining me. I'm sure more will be joining as we chat on here. So, uh, uh, hello, Sonic Link. Hello, Cor Corrosive Abuser. Struggle with that name a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, so this... Uh, this view here is showing my old iPad Air and a bottle of beer. <laughs> uh, this old iPad Air, which um, is familiar to viewers of Sonic Touch, really. It's a, it's a 2013 iPad Air. Pretty much not being used for anything. I needed to find a use for it. I feel guilty about having it in a way. Um, but now that's actually acting as a full-time controller for the um, for the in Integra, and we'll have a little look at that. Sadly, it's not a great app. Uh, Roland are not the greatest at iOS apps. I mean, saying that this is a, I think it even dates to 2012, so this app is uh, hasn't really been updated greatly. And what's of huge disappointment to me is like the editor part of it only lets you edit the supernatural synth sounds more of that later really um but this integra is kind of made up really of two main kind of synth engines i think i'm going to swap this headset mic it's way too noisy so just bear with me Phantom power coming on, phantom power coming on, warming up the mic. Come on, phantom power, phantom power. The mic, the mic, the mic. Takes a while, really. Here we go. Here it is, phantom power. <laughs> All right, now that's better, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's much better. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to have to rig up another mic, I think, for what I want to do tonight. I was going to use that headset mic, but yeah, just way too much crunchy noise going on. I think it's probably mm, occupational hazard of having a beard, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm talking about this Integra, this Integra 7, this thing here. Um, it's a rack mount unit, but you can actually remove, like I have here, I've removed the uh, the rack ears. So it just kind of sits there like a, like a module. Now, when I got it, it didn't have this Wi-Fi component. Um, perhaps I shouldn't pull it out. <laughs> this little Wi-Fi component. Now, there's a little uh, dongle here. Uh, Roland initially uh, was selling a dongle that you could get for it, badged Roland. That you can't get anymore, but they recommend on their own website to get this Onkyo one, which I managed to find on eBay uh, for about 40 quid. So it wasn't cheap, but at least now the Integra has got like a, it's on the Wi-Fi network now. So that means that the uh, that the iPad app then here can <laughs> although it's complaining now because I when I'm trying to pull out the dongle. Uh, I reckon it'll get it back. It does seem to be a fairly robust. Uh, it, it makes a fairly robust connection. So. Um, but that app, sadly, isn't really complete. I don't know if Roland ever intended to kind of complete it or if it was just, uh, you know, a little bit half arsed. Uh, but we'll look at that in a moment. Um, but so I mentioned then that the Integra then is sort of two synths in one, really. There's the continuation of what probably is the D50, I think, in a way. It went through all these different iterations once it sort of became rack mounted, including the venerable J, uh, JV1080. Very, very successful synth. Long, actually, they sold that for quite a while by Roland standards. Um, and that was how I ended up getting this Integra because my friend Jason Jervis, he bought one cheap recently and uh, it got me thinking about, oh yeah, you know, about this multi-timbral thing. Uh, I've kind of, I've been craving one for a while really, partly for my MIDI bass, which I'm going to be plugging that into the Integra, not tonight, but I will do in future shows. But having... Uh, just having just bags of polyphony and bags of multi-timbrality it's just something that's not very common uh, outside of like kind of the workstation-y sort of world um the Korg uh Kronos and whatever the new one's called um that sort of thing and the, the Roland Phantoms or whatever and that feels like almost like a different world from the kind of analog synths the Mother 32s and whatnot uh and you know, and the micro freaks and this this kind of era, this more modern era. So I was uh, I was kind of by looking at the 1080. Then I started thinking, oh yeah, well actually the 1080, what did it become like the 3080 and the then the XV50 series and the, you know, um, and if you follow that lineage, it leads to the Integra Seven. The Integra 7. The Integra. The Integra. The Integra. Yeah, or how the original advertising kind of went. Um, <laughs> so it was... Uh, so I kind of thought, mm, okay. Because I think Roland still... Actually, they do still sell them. I think they're around 1,400 UK pounds. So they're not... I bought this second hand quite a bit cheaper, but um, still not super cheap so they still i mean i paid around 800 i think um which is quite a, still a lot of money uh but it is a lot of synth i mentioned that it's two main types of synths it's the continuation then as you say of the d50 through all of those iterations that synth engine i suppose is that the la synth engine i suppose it's not really that but it's not sure what it i think it went through different kind of names uh, maybe the chat room can help me what that engine is called but um anyone familiar to those Roland synths uh, of that era will know all about the the partials the four partials and uh, and that's what brings me to I was mentioning about the uh, app the app it lets you edit the supernatural synth sounds only it doesn't let you get into the PCM tones which um, 
is that engine that I'm talking about. Maybe the PCM engine, I suppose. That's what it's certainly, that's what it's called in Integra parlance. You've got the Supernatural or you've got PCM. So those PCM synth voices, they're made up of four partials and the time variable filters and time variable envelopes. Um, sorry, yeah, time, yeah, which TV. Uh, it'll be familiar to many of you who've delved into that world. Now, the thing about that is it's very capable and very deep synthesis, but you can't do that from the app, sadly, which is a real shame, because that's what I was kind of hoping to do. Um, but anyway, this, it does, however, have a full kind of control surface for the Supernatural synth. Now, that debuted, I believe, in the Roland, when they brought the Jupiter back with the, the big as it was at the time, flagship Jupiter 80, much maligned. Um, Roland definitely took a misstep there with the use of the Jupiter name. I think it upset a lot of people because it was really not what they wanted the Jupiter name to be associated with. However, this sort of virtual analogue that uh, debuted with the Supernatural, what we call the Supernatural synth, is present and correct within the Integra and... Uh, and it's actually a very good synth. I think it's been overshadowed somewhat because the Ira range, uh, the Ira range launched a few, just only a few years later with the ACB, and now you've got the Zencore. So it feels like the Supernatural synth has sort of got a little bit lost along the wayside. Now the Supernatural, uh, you've got the Supernatural synth, but you've also got Supernatural acoustic. Now that's turned out to be maybe my most favourite part of the Integra because these are realistic acoustic sounds we'll have a little play with some of them because they've got various little things within them that just kind of make what when you play using a regular sort of synth keyboard uh, makes them sound a little bit more realistic uh, like hammer-ons and sort of string noises if they're guitars and um, like actually using the pitch bend for um, for playing scales on wind instruments uh, I'll definitely show that because I found that quite a lot of fun um, but you know this is super unhip these days people you know this is like at the end of a line before Roland, Roland really moved away from that so uh, I'm kind of really enjoying uh, the uh, unhipness of it and of course I was talking on Sonic earlier if I put across here now yes I have got loaded up for you tonight ladies and gentlemen 16 parts of bagpipes <laughs> oh yes so don't touch that dial stay tuned there is things coming. So, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, this Integra, you know, it's designed for a different era, almost, it feels. Um, feels and, and, and because of that, actually combining it with modern stuff makes for quite a lot of fun, really. I think uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot more. Anyway, you're all thinking, come on then, let's hear something. Do you ready for the bagpipes? <laughs> <laughs> um yes uh so we'll do that in a moment um i'm just gonna have to get set up another microphone i think because that headset mic plan that i had uh didn't work very well or so i'll just have to be rotating around hang on let's just try that now first um what i'll do then actually is we'll just do a bit of sounds only and i'm gonna load in to uh into the integra it, it uses a thing called um sound sets and if I look in the sound set menu here, this is essentially a 16 part um, kind of preset. There's a bunch of presets and actually I've only created one of my own so far. There. <laughs> I'll probably get in a bit tighter with this camera. Bagpipery. Mm. But actually I will just back up here just to show one thing. Um, so the Integra 7 sadly doesn't have those buttons underneath the screen that give you shortcuts. Uh, when you're moving around the whole thing, you have to use either this cursor that's around this big wheel, which I think is, was, I'm not sure where that debuted. I think maybe on the Jupiter 80 as well. It's okay, but you know, rack units being flat and like, it is a little awkward to use, so that's why I was keen to 
get the app set up. Right. OK, but anyway, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to load in... I'm just going to load in the basic Integra preview patch. And then, so this will give us uh, 16 preset parts. Now, one of the Integra's kind of showboat features, really, is this thing called Motional Surround. And if I enable this... Um, well, actually, this... Let me load in a different part. Let me load in... Here we go, full orchestra set. We'll load that in. So now when we look at the motional surround, each of the orchestral sounds, which across all the 16 MIDI channels, are then kind of positioned in some kind of orchestral kind of arrangement. And I guess with, you can see there's a person here. There's nothing here from behind, but you can move things into like a virtual behind. I say virtual. Uh, when you when you enable this, the outputs on the back, um, there's eight outputs. Well, as soon as you enable this, outputs one and two become uh, are the left and right, which has this simulated surround effect, the RSS thing. That I think Roland kind of debuted in the late nineties, I think. Or yeah. Um, but then the remaining six outputs are repurposed to be in a proper 5.1 surround sound setup, uh, including an LFE channel, which, again, is kind of showing its date now because everything's moving on to Dolby Atmos. This is... Um, <laughs> uh, so... But something, something happens when you turn, turn on this motional surround... Well, one thing is that it does is it, it kind of bypasses the effects, like the, any any global, re, any reverbs, any of the sounds are, are on. Uh, and Because and, basically it kind of puts it all into, trying to put it into some sort of believable space. Now, uh, we were talking about a new... Uh, I can't remember what it's called now, a um, piece of software today on Sonic State, uh, a, um, a, a reverb plugin, which kind of does a similar thing. You can position things within a, a virtual kind of space. Um, uh, just checking in with the chat room. Uh, oh, look, everybody, lovely. Thanks for joining me. Um, oh, Matt Zed, I owned an Integra a few years back. That app killed me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, right. So anyway, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use, or actually I can just do it here. Let's have a, let's just do it like this. Um, one of the things that I quite like is, uh, if you press the volume button, you get a preview. Uh, and then I can just do that. I mean, I can't do anything remotely as realistic as this myself. But I did realize in the part, if you do go into the, 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 the editor, that you can in the, uh, you can change the phrase. So you can actually audition any sound with any of the phrases. So here's the, uh, the pizzicatos, but played with the shakuhari uh, phrase. <laughs> Not the most, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> this is like the ultimate menu dive. Uh, the, the depth of it is, is kind of crazy. The, the, those PCM tones, if we went into a PCM tone and, uh, went into edit it and then this is that dreaded, I say dreaded. Oh, sorry, not change the part. Um, 
Oh my goodness, there is pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of it. Um, it's so capable, but you know, really, I can see why Roland have kind of killed off this kind of thing. It does make more sense doing this sort of thing on a computer, doesn't it, really? However, there's something quite nice about having hardware, as we all know. Um, and I have a slight confession. I do, I do actually quite enjoy menu diving when you know your way around it, of course, um, and learn all the kind of faster ways of operating it. Now, I don't know if any Integra demons out there know any more than I do, but well, I don't really know much yet, but I know that if you hold shift and turn things, holding down shift will give you like an accelerator. It'll make things uh, much faster to move through. Um, yeah, but you, you know, everything is quite buried. And that's kind of what makes the editor, the iPad editor, such a shame in a way, like the potential for creating a really nice PCM synth editor is huge. So, but I think that they probably thought, oh, you know, we'll focus on the new thing, the supernatural synth, and, uh, and that'll be enough for everyone. But sadly not. Anyway, uh, right. So yeah, so you could, I could just bore you all and just go through all these little things. I'm not going to do that. Um, all of these little uh, So, like, when you hear that little, little flute preview, for instance, it's not just, like, played. There are different enunciations and different kind of flute-specific things going on. Uh, so the supernatural sounds... Anything that's a supernatural acoustic has some kind of something um, to, uh, to, make, to make it sound kind of realistic in some way uh let's just uh i'll show you this thing with a pitch bend though I've, I've been quite enjoying this So it's like it's kind of fun because that touch strip of the key of the key step controller there, that flat touch strip, means. I mean, I don't think those things were even invented. Oh well, not certainly the key step wasn't when when that Integra came out. But um, if you try and do that with a regular mod wheel, uh, sorry, a regular pitch bend, well, you can get different results. Let's let's call it that. But just being able to just to smooth your finger on the touch thing just can give you some kind of interesting uh, interesting effects let's do that again and in case you're wondering if i went in to edit that Oh, sorry, second page, then the play scale. And that's where you choose what will actually, what notes it'll do.
So, I mean, I'm not very good at it at the moment, but I can imagine with a bit of practice, that's actually quite an interesting way of um, of playing kind of uh, wind instruments. Because um, it's sort of... Um, ah, Tom Curtin, <laughs> I bought it, yes. Yeah, I was, I did, I bought it. Um yeah. So uh, yes. So stay tuned. I will be doing my sixteen parts of of uh, of bagpipes shortly. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a little bit more. What what my thinking was? Why to get something so hugely unhip? Uh, it's so unhip for me. It's it's super hip. Um, I think. Yeah, MIDI bass is... I can't wait to do it with a MIDI bass. It's something that I'm uh, chomping at the bit to do. Because uh, the MIDI bass is so kind of capable in terms of... You can have different MIDI channels per string. Or even you could set up splits across the fingerboard. Have all sorts of things. Um, so actually having you know a really powerful multi-timbral synth... Um, can I say multi timbral without without people thinking that I'm like a, a village idiot? Or do you have to say multi timbral? <laughs> it's just multi timbral will do. Um, yeah, around eight hundred, I think. Just uh, just uh, for the it's what it cost. Um, uh, yeah, I was bidding on uh, the, te the 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 DXV fifty fifty on Sonic a few weeks back. Uh, but yeah, that path led me to the Integra. And as I say, like I was saying at the top of the show, what I wasn't expecting was I wasn't expecting to really enjoy the acoustic instruments. And I've been making lots of little doodles up using, you know, quite organic -y acoustic sounds. Now, what I do want to show you, though, is that when you play those acoustic sounds in and you toggle it between the motion, sur the motional surround, as it's called, and just the regular it does sound like way more realistic or in terms of actually sounds like real instruments rather than MIDI instruments. It's a bit profound. So hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that then. It's holding a lot of its value, says Chris Taylor. It's holding some value. Um, you know, I think that they will... Uh, I think that they will have a certain, you know... Um, well, they're certainly super useful, aren't they? I mean, the pianos in there are great and the organs and electric pianos and so just as a kind of live you know sort of do it all kind of thing it's it's gonna have a purpose but just in terms of it being kind of cool synthesis it's uh, <laughs> i don't know i don't know that it that it is um right i'm just gonna give you a a nice close-up look of the integra i'm just gonna set up another microphone bear with me OK, well, I'm going to just... Oh, I might as well chat to you while I'm doing this. Um, yeah, I did have a headset mic, but it just was making way too much kind of noise as I was moving around. So I do think about you. I really do, I promise. Um, I'm using uh, mostly Lewitt mics these days, in case you are interested. I'm using a... The 640 uh, as my main mic here, uh, but this is the the 540, which is very similar. It's just the single diaphragm, I suppose, the dual diaphragm. But these mics are great, and they've got some really unique features. One of which is the very neat uh, pop shield. So like when you put the mic into its cradle, fasten it on there. Then the pop shield, magnetically, 
There we go. As opposed to regular pop shields, you know, that's a really neat little pop shield. It sometimes, if you're doing something that's got a lot of plosives, maybe using a, another pop shield as well is sometimes necessary. But in the most, pa, 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 you say pa, pa. Actually, let's get this in the shot so you can see what I'm doing. Me as well. Just a little bit. I love mics. Big fan of mics. Got quite a decent collection here. But these Lewitts, I think, are really cool. Uh, it's doing a pretty good job though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just thought I'd just show a bit of Lewitt love. Neat things. Um, yeah, I'm just setting up another mic. Uh, that'll just take a moment, a moment, and then we'll uh, we'll get cracking and try and make some some tunes up, something or something or other with this Integra. Now, you see, you can browse. Let's get this up again. Then, if I was browsing on here. I can cho choose which part of these part buttons here. So I've got to say part four. Hit t hit tone finder. And then you've got like a two shortcut buttons here. I, I can either shortcut to the supernatural tones or shortcut to the PCM tones. So then once you're inside of here, in the tone finder, I can step through. I've got different categories, organs, keyboards, accordions, etc. And there's tons and tons and tons of sounds in here. And it's also got all the SRX boards and a bunch of uh, expand expansions for the Supernatural uh, engine as well. Uh, but what you have to do is you have to kind of load them in. Um, So you've got these like virtual slots. So like on the original earlier models, you'd actually put these cards into the sort of circuit board. Uh, but in this case, they're kind of virtual, but you still have to kind of load them in. Um, but yeah, uh, I won't bother with that now, but there's just tons. It's just there's tons of uh, tons and tons and tons of patches, and uh, I'm not I've never ever really been a big fan of just preset browsing. Um, but uh, yeah, so I tell you what though, actually, lovely chatties, I would be really interested to know which, uh, with you know, some good sounds because there's so many on there, you get lost so easily. Um, Half God, half beast is saying some of those SRX sounds are good. If we keep, I'd be, I'd be nice to, uh, I'd, I'd be nice to to know what patches to kind of look out for. Um, right, let's just get my mic plugged in. Uh, okay, sorry, right, nearly there. <laughs> Plug in my mic into the RC505 Mark II loop station. And one of my bugbears is whenever you've got phantom power and it's buried. Right, I'll tell you what, look, I, I need, I think the phantom, the phantom power might still be turned on. So before I plug it in, I want to turn off the phantom power. Uh, look how many button presses this takes. Well, I say look, I'll tell you, <laughs> because I'm not going to move the camera to look. But I'm going to have to go one press for menu, two press for input, three press for setup, four. Yeah, it took four, five, sorry, five, five interactions 
to actually turn off the the phantom power you know that's just bad phantom power needs to be treated with great respect for, oh sorry the fan, the microphones that need phantom power so having like a phantom power set so bad set so deeply into the menus is is poor poor for uh, poor showing that's on the boss rc505 mark ii um Oh, so what I don't have beside the Supernatural Tones is the Supernatural ARX extensions for the Phantom G series. This is from Burkut. With an AX, with ARX 03, you drive a real brass section with articulations and pitch. Cool. Yeah, I want to find more information about the Supernatural acoustic instruments and how to best utilise them. I haven't really found good documentation about that yet. Um... Okay, let's see. I'll just get my mic, see if my mic is working. Yep, okay, so I'm going to switch over to be over here. Okay, there's this other mic. Uh, a little quiet, let me just turn that up. A little bit better. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, sorry, it's a bit of a rubbish angle, but right. So I've got a key step here. All right. So here's that app. And kind of useful. There's some, there are some good, cool uses of it. Oh, I'm a bit hot on the mic. Um, having a mixer, being able to mute out, pan, and also EQ is kind of handy. And that's on all 16 parts. And I can change parts at the top here as well. Then I can go into this view, which I think this is probably the most useful of the whole app, which gives me an overview of all 16 parts and from here i can change the level pan apply the master effects chorus reverb change the midi channel mute uh if i tap on the thing here oops the down arrow here it opens up this patch browser where i can change whatever it is uh, well it's got little icons um or i can browse by tone and bank and like here i can see i could choose if i chose this here this is the ethnic sr um not srx the expansion pack for the um integra that i've loaded in of ethnic sounds and um connection error <laughs> that's probably because i pulled it out earlier let's set that to read <laughs> that's my fault i shouldn't have pulled that dongle out Oh no, seems like it's broken it. <laughs> it's saying it's, it can't find it now. Uh, is it like really bad to pull a Wi-Fi dongle out of an Integra when it's on? I hope that hasn't broke it. Let's just try a reboot.
yeah, one of the things with the Integra is when you turn it on, then it will have to load in whatever expansions that you've got uh, enabled. I've only got one um, enabled at the moment. So you can see how long that could take. So if you've got all four expansion packs kind of um, you know, predetermined to load in, then it's going to take that much longer to turn on. Uh, menu, wireless. Yeah, there we are, we're all good. Okay. <laughs> Phew didn't think I'd break it but it was a perhaps a daft thing to pull out the dongle <laughs> right then let's have a look here okay so yeah so I could browse I could uh, and actually you could you can you've got that preview button here as well and, and you can latch it I think somehow yeah so you can just you, you, That's a san a santor. So it's kind of nice hearing what the instruments are meant to sound like. Let's see, classic koto. So I mean, like, and you know, we all know a lot of these sounds, um, but just hearing them. I find that kind of thing actually quite ed it's actually quite educational um it'll give you it'll certainly give you an idea of how the sounds roughly what you should be sort of looking to do with them if you want to try and was there a yeah was there a yeah in that then That. It's so odd shouts, yeah, in the middle of that. Gotta do that again. <laughs> right, so you have to shout, yeah. So I'm assuming then, if we were to load in that sound, let's do that. So, channel one. In the lower rock daves. No, in this case. Now, here's another of the disappointments I've found, and that's not just with the app, it's with the, the Integra, is that any of these supernatural acoustic sounds, you can't really edit them at all. There's nothing much you can do from this other than from this uh, iPad editor regarding supernatural acoustic sounds other than mix, let apply global effects and that sort of thing that's all you can do from there but if we look on the control and we'll go into the edit here we've got resonance bend depth buzz key switch variation and that's it and you find that with a lot of these in fact if i flick through these they just give you just a few parameters to play around with. So it means that you can't really pick apart these supernatural sounds, uh, acoustic sounds, 
and see what they're made of. Um, are they made out of samples? Are they modelled or are they a combination of the two? I think it's probably something like a combination of the two. And, and or possibly the way that they work is uh, it's not particularly editable for some reason or it's too complicated to, to put into an editor. I don't know. But it does kind of mean, although the dreaded rompler word it definitely sort of leads into that kind of rompler kind of description when you are so kind of locked out of the sound itself however you can't really complain too much because there is so much you can actually do so i mentioned then that you know it's it's a machine of two halves pcm and supernatural and within that supernatural side then you've got supernatural acoustic that we've just been he hearing and you've also got supernatural synth and that's what we're going to look at now the supernatural synth part of it then as i mentioned is a virtual analog um three like a three layer synth and i was excited about this because i i did for my sins have a roland Geyer synth which actually used a lot and it came out on lots and lots of gigs um Obviously, we know that the Gaia is not a great sounding synth, or what it, it can do, it could make some really good sounds. Um, what was particularly lovely about the Gaia, though, I think, and still is actually, I still think it's one of the greatest laid out, uh, you know, subtractive synths. The layout is beautiful, especially the way it works with the three layers. You've got three central duplications of exactly the same synth, like. I think, you know, like, like almost like having three stacked synths or um, multi timbral synth. I don't think the guy was, I think it was, a, uh, I can't remember. There was, there was some weird GM stuff you could kind of get at the guy as well. But um, I really liked that. Now, if we look at a supernatural synth, um, well, in fact, let's listen to a few first just so we can hear what the supernatural synth engine sounds like. So I'm going to shoot to Tone Finder and down the left hand column here we can see SN-S -S is Supernatural Synth. If I was to look in uh, what, electric bass for instance, SNA would be Supernatural um, Acoustic. So yeah, to edit like the bass we would see we've only got those two parameters under instrument, noise level and variation. But if we went into the supernatural synth, then now we're into a full, a full synth that is very much laid out in a familiar way. If you're familiar with the Gaia, then this is laid out in a similar way. Let's have a look on here now. So this is one thing that the editor, this editor does kind of, oops, kind of okay, but it's not great. Um, so I'd load in, let's get like a synth bass in then on here. Supernatural synth. Yeah, so SNS. Let's see the, their preview of it. So. It's quite a busy pattern that is for some of those fat sounds. And so forth, so like listening to. Okay, let's take that one then as an example then. Now, if I go into here, into my. I've got like on the editor, like a full editor now for Supernatural Synth, and where we've got our three partials or three layers which we can turn on and off and we can select which layer we're editing at a time. 
and it's almost identical to the Gaia, almost identical, um, from the same range, I think, more or less, of os oscillators that all come with a variation and step through the different waves. Uh, in fact, let's have a listen to this. So, partial, partial one. It's like a, some sort of noise layer. You can see that noise. Partial two. And then partial three. So it's, it's comprised of these three parts. Now, one of the things that made the Gaia so cool was the switches that you could hold down. Like, so it's made up of the three layers. And if you hold down, you could turn on select layer, adjust something, turn it on, turn it off. Uh, now, <laughs> I went to do that on here and like, it's really cool if you want you can change all three partials at the same time by selecting them all so i went to press <laughs> and pressing all three is a nightmare oh god i can't i can't do it i, I honestly grouping my fingers together it's an absolutely rubbish touch ui that i mean that's like i don't think that had any real kind of uh r d on it because you'd have spotted that from the beginning it's unless my fingers my fingers are pretty average size i would have thought but um yeah i can't do it i can yes i did it i got it i picked all three but it took me until then to do it so then i can adjust Can adjust parameters that affect all three layers at the same time. <sighs> but you know, I'm kind of sort of retrospectively reviewing an app that was that's ten years old now, um, and I suppose was kind of cool in its day. But mm, even still, I think I would have. If I was reviewing it back then, I would have been a bit grumpy about some of this. However, so we can see that the Supernatural synth then does at least have this editor. Now, uh, I don't think maybe I could turn it on in the background and have a look. Yeah, we're gonna... I did recently get a... Um... If I can find it. There's a free editor. This is a pretty bleak looking thing. Well, it's just synchronizing. Uh, let's move that out of the way. Well, you're not going to be able to see that very well, but this editor. It's just in. It's just syncing with the hardware at the moment. Uh, assuming it will do. Yeah, yeah, it's doing it. Um, but this editor, which is free, a uh, third-party editor, lets you go the entire distance. Uh, it's made. Uh, as soon as it's synced, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. You can't resize it or anything, so it just is. It is what it is. Uh, Let's see if I can get the camera in tighter on it. Oops, one moment. Uh. Let's move it. Sorry, ter terrible view. Uh, but at least here now, if I was to look at something on here 
uh, at least I've, I've barely used it, so I don't really know my way around it. But PCM synth, if I was to go into it, um, part of you, let's select. Should really, I, I've barely looked at this now, but what you can do is you can go the whole distance with this. Um, right, so let's bring in a PCM synth as an example. PCM synth. And here it is. With all of. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you've got your four partials that you can turn on and off from here. And. Yeah. <laughs> So, so at least here is some someone's diligently done this. Uh, let me see who made it. Uh, Sakuro dot ne dot jp. So, um, k take take take. Um, yeah. So at least at least you can do it that way, should you wish. Um, which, you know, I say it's not the best, not the nicest looking, but at least it does. It, it gets to every single aspect of, of the synth with an editor way more than what the app that the iPad app does. But like looking at this and just looking at just how much information or like one patch is made up of, I guess to have done it in some kind of app that was, you know, efficient and easy to operate would probably be nigh on impossible it's nice to see this app though does have um graphical representations of the time variable envelopes with each of the stages kind of with you know dotted lines to yeah that's kind of cool yeah let's change the camera angle again stay pot damn you <laughs> okay so I promised I'd do it I'm gonna load up the bagpipes Bagpipery. Right. Ah. So let's make let's make up a little ditty <laughs> with bagpipes. Sixteen parts. I wonder what it sounds like really low. Ooh, does, does some weird stuff. Oh, I quite like that.
Only 10 more layers to go, everyone. That's six so far. I don't think I can even do it to myself, actually. I'm sorry, kind of trying to make this. Uh... <laughs> um, however, there is something that we should do with those bagpipes, and that is use the motional surround on it. Uh, so if I enable motional surround, uh, let's have a look. Oops, let's go there. We can see that all the bagpipes are currently are currently all stacked on top of each other. So let's, uh, I can move them around using the cursors on here. And uh, let's solo that bagpipe. <laughs> How can I solo? I can mute. Um, all right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just move them. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just move them all around and just put them in a few different places. Uh, and then we'll, uh, and we'll have a little, little listen if you can bear it. There is a, there is an additional uh, stereo input on the front and on the back that appears um, as uh, an extra input which you can apply some of the internal effects to as well. Um, and I'll actually usefully you can plug into the front and the back and it'll just kind of mix them together. Right let's get that you're going to have to be listening in stereo for this to work. <laughs> right, yeah, it was a six parts, wasn't it? Yeah, let's... See, I'm doing this kind of laboriously with this, but actually that is one of the things that the app is ideal for. Look, swing back to the app view. Essentially, I can go to my emotional surround here and then I can go to part. Oh, let me just looks like it needs to be synchronized. Just press the read button and that should. Yeah, there we go. Putting all our bagpipes in. So you see, look, moving things around. In fact, we'll keep this window open and as we play this dirge, I'll move stuff around. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly how to do it. I think you just use LFOs or built in, but you can make things move around within, hence, hence the name, uh, emotional, uh, emotional surround. Oh, what a horrible piece of music. But now, ooh, what note's that? That doesn't want to be in there. <laughs> it's a horrible piece of music, I'm sorry. Let's put them all back. Low drone, put that in the middle there. 
And look what happens when I turn off motional surround. Enable it. It's quite profoundly different sounding, isn't it? I mean, yeah, equally horrible. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> um, uh, I need to keep an eye on the time. Oh, the time, the time. I'm so sorry. Time has got away from us. I promised I'd sign off, actually, because uh, Mr. Dominic Hawking is streaming. Uh, I think he's actually already begun, so I apologise for overlapping there, because uh, Dom Hawking, he was uh, Mr. Wiggly, of course, was on uh, Sonic Talk where, with myself and Nick Bat earlier today, and uh, we like to support each other on these, in these things. Um, just in case you haven't caught Sonic State recently, um, there's the first Sonic State's well it's its third live event but its first one is actually branded as an EMOM that's electronic music open mic uh, event in uh, in the city of Bath in the football club actually Bath City Football Club uh, and the date I'll just refer to my diary um, so well it's going to be a really cool event uh, it's going to be lots of uh, here we go. Yeah, it's the 26th of November. That's a Saturday night. And we're going to party as well. I, well, I am. I don't know about everyone. I think uh, Mr. Wiggly's going to be going home. <laughs> He'll stick around for a bit. But there's going to be a bunch of familiar faces there. So if you fancy, if you're anywhere in, in the vicinity, it would be really nice uh, if you can head down to that. I think... Um, uh, it is likely that it actually will sell out. There's not an awful lot of tickets. Uh, so if you are interested, probably best to get a ticket if you do fancy coming along. Now, in the next year, a coming year, or years even, um, these EMOMs, uh, I'm going to try and get around to performing at various ones around the country. Something I, that I'd like to do. I'd like to do with Mr. Steve Davis, if he's available. Um, but we're also, me and Steve have got plans to do gigs whenever we can. Um... Yeah, both of us are you know, scheduling problems, darling. Uh, but we can, uh, we do absolutely intend to do a lot more kind of live performances. But I'm going to do, a, I wasn't intending to do solo ones, but I am now feeling a bit of the itch to do some more solo shows. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, okay. Uh... <laughs> so bit of a not a great show tonight sorry it wasn't particularly musically interesting but i just wanted to show the integra seven and uh just at the beginning of my journey um part of the reason i didn't mention actually one of the reasons that it is here is that i'm going to be doing a live uh live sessions just purely music sessions and uh, maybe a little bit of talking but not really mostly music um and i'm I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do it on uh, Twitch or on YouTube as of yet, but uh, like long form and then maybe cut some extracts from that then to put up on YouTube, just like um, the best bits or some or like the the climax of whatever it is I'm noodling about. Um, but uh, <laughs> Wagyu certainly did bagpipes in your life. Uh, uh, do you? <laughs> uh but um, yeah, so, uh, ah, DJ Rick Dawson is saying, do it on Twitch, audio is better. Okay, that's a really good tip, thank you very much. Um, so there's been a conversation I've been missing then about bagpipe MIDI controllers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Um, yeah, so... Integra's quite new to me, uh, so I'm just going to be, uh, yeah, figuring out how I can use it more. Uh, hey, thanks, Wagyu. <laughs> so kind. Um, yeah. Uh, so okay, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm, 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 I'm going to sign off really, just so if any of you can go and support uh, Mr. Wiggly on his channel, that would be super cool. And apologise to him for uh, for being a bit tardy and over overshooting somewhat. I didn't even notice the time. Uh, Bandcap Modular is saying bagpipes into Morphogene. Yes, that's a good idea. Speaking of Morphogene, I think I'm actually going to look to get one of those little. Um, 4ms pod type things really small and then mount the mount the um the 
uh, morphogene in there so almost turning it into like a little desktop synth unit or something I, it's so brilliant morphogene but it's i think it gets a little bit lost in the big euro rack sort of case that it's in at the moment uh, i think it uh, yeah anyway more about that i uh i think i will do something like that um what's my handle name on twitch uh i think it's gaz goldstar actually um i should know that um but anyway i've got to go so you can get over and uh support mr wiggly thanks ever so much everyone for joining me for just this little kind of introductory look at the integra 7 and um i'll see you soon thanks everyone <laughs>